Hey guys, so we're back on our rumble strip job. The city, the city inspector didn't like the design of the first one, so they, they made the guys we're working for rip it all out, and they're gonna make us do it again with a little bit different design. So <clears throat> I'll go over that a little bit later in the video, but we're gonna get this all formed up. They ripped this out this morning. I know, big waste, big waste of money. Honestly, this thing doesn't even really need to be here, in my opinion. So we're gonna get our forms back up, get them set to grade, and then we'll talk a little bit later about why why they made them rip it out. So to form this up, luckily I could use the same forms as I did on the first pour. And what most of these are are PVC AZAC trim boards. So they bend really, really good and it's still really rigid. And then I had some one by, uh, like like that's a one by 10, I think, uh, pine boards already. And those are a little bit flexible, but there are some areas in this that are kind of straight. So we could use those on the straighter areas. And then the PVC, like Luke's putting up right now, we could use on this curve part. So, and it, and it makes curving forms really, really easy with this stuff. The only thing is that they're pretty expensive. A 16 foot one by eight was just about a hundred bucks for one of those boards. But the good thing is you can use them over and over and over again. Um, for that type of money, you're gonna wanna use them over again. So we're using the exact same forms. And you can see they had the, the layout of the concrete island kind of laid out in the dirt for us. They, wanted it three feet wide by whatever length that was. I think it was like 55 feet. And the, the further end way down there, they, they want that curved. Whereas the, the end up here that you can't see, you know, in the beginning of the camera here, down the bottom of the camera is just straight across. Because that's kind of buttoned into a sidewalk right there. You can see how flexible those forms are. That, that works really nice for doing curved stuff. And then... We, we, you know, we get the end screwed together and then we're putting some cross pieces in that are three feet just to help the forms hold their shape. And then we're gonna drive in a bunch of metal pins. We got these metal pins, they're 24 inches. They got holes through them for screws. And we'll just have to put in them, you know, every two or three feet, we'll have to put those pins in to help hold the forms as we pour. And then what we can do also is we can brace back off to the original asphalt if we need to put some braces on, which we will. We'll have to put plenty of those on too. And that's how we set it to grade. We wanted it two inches higher than the pavement on each side. So we just made up a little jig with our straight edge. And then Luke can just lift the form up to the bottom of the straight edge. And that puts the top of the form two inches higher than the pavement. And it keeps the slope of the pavement too. It was sloped pretty good. So that was a pretty easy way to set grade to this thing. And then the plan just called for wire mesh in this, no rebar. So we're putting down these slab bolsters to keep the wire, help keep the wire up off the dirt. And then we'll lay the wire right on top of these. And, you know, if we need to tug it up a little bit as we pour, we can do that too. But just the basic, they call this 661010 wire mesh. It's, you know, they have a heavy gauge wire and a light gauge wire mesh. This is the lighter gauge wire mesh. It comes in a 5 by 10 sheet, so we had to cut them in half. And then you'll see here in a second, we'll have to still shape the wire a little bit because we don't really want it touching the edges. So any part that's touching the edges, we cut it back a little bit, 2 or 3 inches. Pulled that, either just slid that piece up under the wire, or we just threw it out all together. Those little wire cutters I'm using too work really good for cutting the light gauge wire. They make cutting it really, really easy. All right, we're back to do our rumble strip again. Second try. They didn't like how high it was last time. They figured the snow plows were gonna hit it and damage the truck or damage the person driving the truck. So it was three inches higher than the pavement before. Now it's only two inches higher, which I don't think does much difference, but that's what they want, so. Back. So for the pour, we're using a 4500 PSI mix. It's got microfiber in it still. 
It's got air entrainment in it. It's got mid-range water reducer in it. And it does, it, even though it looks a little loose here, it's really not. It's really sticky, pasty stuff to work with. So it's got a lot of chemicals in it. So, you know, you want to make it at least workable. And then Luke's going to vibrate the edges there with that De DeWalt pencil vibrator just to make sure the edges are smooth, even though they're all going to be buried afterwards. Now, we're going to just pour a bunch of this out because we can, we can rake it pr pretty close to top of form here and not really worry about getting it low or high. Uh, ideally, we'd rather have it a little bit high and then we could just either rake it back or rake a little bit of it out. But now, you know, me and Darren will just pour some out. Luke will start magging the edges and screeding it here in a second. But when you have, uh, sometimes when you have a high cement content and you use some water reducer, it makes the surface a little bit stickier, I guess I, I'll say. So it just doesn't make it, sometimes doesn't make it as easy to work with as it normally is. For most exterior pours here in Maine, where we, we get a lot of freeze-thaw cycles, that was one of the big deals about this thing sticking up so high the first time was, you know, this road's going to be plowed, that parking lot's going to be plowed. Now you got this big piece of concrete sticking up out of the road. What's going to happen when you run the, the city snow plows over it? They're going to hit that thing and just, who knows what they're going to do. They're going to bounce. Uh, they're going to get caught up on it. So that was why they ripped it out in the first place. And they now they lowered it an inch, with nothing, with no, uh, with none of it really sticking up as far as as far as a stub edge. Now it's just going to have a tapered edge to the pavement, so it's still going to be kind of a pain for the plows, but it'll be a little bit better than the first design. So what I'm using now is I'm using a product called Day One. It's like a finishing aid, and you can spray this right on the surface. You can mag float it, you can power trowel it, you could broom it after. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't hurt the surface. It just it helps you finish the concrete and close it up a little bit better. It'll actually help slow the set down too on the surface a little bit. So if you got a, a lot of sun, a lot of wind, you could spray it with this stuff and it just helps the concrete finish a little easier. You can see how nice and easy that is to mag float now and close that surface up which is going to be key when it comes time to, you know, mag it again and put the broom finish on it and all that. We want a pretty decent finish to start with before we do that. So we just sprayed everything. Now me and Darren are just getting it floated out, getting it closed up, and then we got to let it sit for a little bit before we start the finishing process on it. All right, so we got our got our medium strip in the detail on this is they want us to taper at the edges of both sides down two inches and then they want to taper it up to about six inches see that little jig we made so that's that's the detail we got to do on the edges oh well, it's firming up pretty good we used the 4500 psi mix today we're going to get right into it see if we can get the edges shaped up The good thing about cutting these edges down like this, tapering them like this, is it's very similar to how we taper all our garage door openings too. So it wasn't anything new to us to do this, which helps speed the process up a little bit because there's about 110 lineal feet of this to do. And as you can see, the sun's starting to come up. It's still pretty early in the morning. It's probably about 7.30 in the morning right now. But the concrete is firming up good because it's, it's got a, a lot of cement and it's a 4500 PSI mix. And I believe they were still, this is still warm water time for the concrete companies because it's still pretty, it's, uh, it's actually late in the fall. And it's right around that time when they start adding a little warm water to the concrete in the mornings because the mornings are really chilly. So we'll, we'll taper, we, you know, we'll get all that concrete pulled out of the edge. We'll get it tapered like this. Then we'll clean it up, make it look nice and neat. And then we're going to put a broom finish on it, as you'll see here in a minute. 
Well, there was, I mean, there was quite a bit of work just to the tapering, and it, we actually pulled out quite a bit of concrete, cutting that down two inches like that. But it's just a matter of shaping it, you know, and leaving the leaving the top flat now like that with no grooves in it like the first time makes doing the edges quite a bit easier actually. Now with a 4500 PSI mix, there's a lot of cement in it, so you'd think there'd be a lot of paste, and that's the case most of the time. So we just we mag float this out to get a nice paste on the surface, mag float the tapered edges, then we put a little broom finish on it, and I'm using a little hand broom for the tapered part. And that actually worked really, really good, so it helped clean up all it's those edges really ball. nice. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. And then for the top, I'm just using a regular two foot, what they call a concrete broom. And the key to this is just going slow and easy, not stopping and starting any more than you have to. And you can see how, how nice, neat and clean that looks now where those edges blend into the flat part up top. So I went around, you know, me and Luke went around, we've, we, we've magged out the edges, we got the edges broom, magged the top as we go, and then Darren's following in behind us, just getting the top broomed out. Yeah, looking good, that's what they want right there, just broom finish, flat on top, beveled edges, and they're going to pave right up to our bevel. All right, that's it, all done for the second time. A little bit different design here. Should be a little easier to drive over, but it's still sticking up two inches above the asphalt, so I don't know how it's gonna be to plow over. That's not for us to decide, I guess. We just do what they tell us. Looks pretty darn good, though. So this was early the next day. It actually was raining out. But we had to get the forms off so they could start grading for the paving. They wanted to get this paved, you know, like today in the rain. So we got back here. We got everything stripped off. And this is this is kind of what it looks like after, after the forms are off. So it gives you a good idea. And then I'm going to show you after they did paving. All right, so here's the finished product all repaved. You can see it's not quite as much of a bump look at that they scott it all up already brand new can't pave it without scarring it up and damaging it uh, it's not quite as much of a bump for the snow plow but it's still a pretty good sized bump so the big difference big one of the big differences is the asphalt right here now meets the lip before it was an inch down so you had you had this thing sticking up an inch plus you had this two inch bevel right here for the snow plow so that's what was going to make it a pain in the ass. So after two times, let's hope we get it right. All right, so here we are the following spring to see how this concrete median made it through the winter. Looks like the plow, the plow chipped it up pretty good right here. It does stick up quite a bit. It's up two inches over the pavement. I mean, for the most part, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Doesn't look like they scarred it up too bad, but it definitely, definitely sticks up pretty high I don't know what do you guys think let me know down in the comments do you think this thing sticks up too high do you think it just could have been flush like why is there even a bump here honestly but maybe it's when these guys back out they know they're backing out into the road if they hit that bump but for the most part I think it, it held up pretty good no cracks chipped up a little bit but it's in pretty good shape Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.